Of all of the Japanese exclusive cards we have seen, there's no doubt in my mind that Vending Ghastly and Vending Haunter would have had the largest impact on the overall metagame and competitive play in general than any other cards that we missed out on outside Japan. In Japan, these cards would have been available for the base Fossil Era, but also base Gym. And that's speaking in terms of North American formats. Japan didn't actually have a standardized format until much later. But for the sake of this video, I'm just pretending that these two cards were part of the normal release schedule for North America in the same way they were in Japan, and seeing what type of havoc they would have actually caused as a deck. First of all, Ghastly's first attack, Spookify, keeps your opponent from playing any trainer cards on their next turn, which completely ruins their setup from the get-go. Thinking back to these base set era decks, even base gym, you got your entire setup purely from draw power. And so if you get spookified before you can really get that setup, then you don't really have any hope other than just top decking every single thing you need. Decks at the time were averaging 30-ish trainer cards per deck, so you effectively make it so they can't play half the cards in their deck with one attack for one colorless energy. And the effect of Spookify is on your opponent. So there's no switching Pokemon, moving around your bench, getting out of this effect at all. So then you evolve up into Vending Haunter, where again, for one energy, you can use Poltergeist, which does 10 damage times the number of trainer cards in your opponent's hand. So if you have deprived them of using any at all, you know, they're going to have at least four or five, which is a pretty devastating combo for only one energy that you can accomplish on your second turn. But fully utilizing the strategy of the deck, which is to kind of force your opponent or trick them into drawing even more cards, Poltergeist can get extremely hefty. And depending on what matchup you're against, Poltergeist is most likely going to knock out any basic Pokemon that isn't a Chansey. So you're looking at a turn 1 Spookify, a turn 2 Poltergeist, and also on turn 2, what you're going to do is evolve on up into Dark Vileplume, whose Pokemon power Hay Fever makes it so that no trainer cards can be played. So all of these trainers in your opponent's hand, they're now stuck there, and your opponent cannot do anything about it. Except maybe evolve up into a muck if they're able, but this deck has ways to counteract that, basically gusting out a Grimer before it's ever able to evolve at all. For backup, we can also include a copy of Vending Mr. Mime, whose neutral damage Pokemon power removes any weaknesses or resistances. And so if you are up against Chanseys or Jigglypuffs or Lickitungs, then this Mr. Mime basically acts as a walking resistance gem that your opponent can't replace when it's on your bench. So in that way, it's much better than Resistance Gym. In playtesting my own builds, I thought that they were absolutely diabolical. And then I saw Jason Klosinski's build of this deck, and the man is a genius, uh, because it really takes full advantage of the fact that there is no maximum hand size in Pokemon, and the fact that you can play as many trainers per turn as you want, and really creates an unwinnable game situation for your opponent. I am so excited to get into this deck. Let's go. Because it's Halloween, I'm allowing my playmats to dress up as other card games. Of course, the basis of this deck is going to be that vending Spookify Ghastly, and you're going to be doing the exact same thing no matter what the game situation is. You're going to use a turn one Spookify, and even if your own hand has been raided, just to get the Ghastly into play, or if your opponent goes first, gets a last off on you. It's still pretty easy to recover in this deck. That's not going to be a problem. So we got a full playset of Vending Ghastly, a full playset of Vending Haunter, and you already know the idea. Once you get Haunter into play on turn two, you're going to evolve up the Oddish that you would have been playing on turn one, along with the Ghastly before you use Spookify. You get that evolved up into Dark Vile Plume, then you're going to use Haunter's Poltergeist, only one energy. That's not going to be hard to get down on there. With Poltergeist, you're going to be dealing a ton of damage, probably knocking out your opponent's active. Take a prize. If the game's still going at that point, you've got Dark Vileplume in play, so your opponent is still trainer locked. So the most that they can try to do 
is evolve up their Pokemon, attack you back. It is possible that your Haunters may get knocked out during the course of gameplay, but by the time that's happening, you've already accomplished your setup. You've probably got at least one other Ghastly down on the bench. By turn three or four, you've got another one evolved up into Haunter. It's very easy to get that one energy on there. Your Vileplume line is going to be a 3-1-2 line. The Dark Gloom is really just in there just in case for some reason all of your Pokemon breeders get prized. Uh, or at least a portion of them get prized. It's not going to come up all that often because you're going to be evolving straight from Oddish into Dark Vileplume. Because otherwise you're building towards a turn 3 setup. And that really gives your opponent too much room to work with and get their own setup based on how much draw power there actually is in this format. So that turn two Dark Vile Plume is going to be essential. Even with only two copies of it in this deck, it's going to be very easy to accomplish that. Very early game, because of how much draw and search power is actually in this deck, that's really the most evil part of this deck, is the fact that its entire trainer base is basically draw and search, but it does it in a way that actually screws over your opponent just as much as it's going to help you. So we've got a full playset of computer search. Don't worry about the discards. That's going to come very easy. Same thing with item finder. That's just going to be a way to recycle cards that you do need. And again, do not worry about the discards because this deck utilizes just about every form of draw power available in the base gym format, except for draw cards that have you or your opponent discard or reshuffle your hand. So part of that is gonna be a full playset of Bill, also a full playset of Erica, which lets you draw up to three cards, and then your opponent can also draw up to three cards. If they know what your strategy is, they're not gonna wanna draw more cards to add trainers to their hand, but if they're not savvy to what you're doing, this is a perfect setup to completely screw them over because they're going to go, yeah, okay, I'll draw more cards. Maybe I'll get the evolution cards I need to power up my Pokemon, keep them from getting knocked out. And in doing so, they're probably filling their hand with even more trainer cards. Same thing with Surge's Treaty. Either both of you can take a prize card or only you draw a card. Now, if they go for the bait and they take a prize card, that's potentially adding another trainer. Same thing with Blaine's Quiz too, is if even if they know what you're doing, if they accidentally guess correctly, they still have to draw two more cards. Misty's Wish isn't as disruptive, but it's still a minor form of draw power. And so we're looking at full play sets of Surge's Treaty, Blaine's Quiz 2, and Misty's Wish just for the opportunities to draw more cards. Because remember, you're playing all of these trainers on turn one, and turn two before you get the Dark Vile Plume on the field. An opportunity that your opponent will not have after you've already used your initial Spookify. So this is pretty much just a huge turd in the face to them. A couple copies of Switch in here just in case you do have to start the game with an Oddish or Mr. Mime in the active position. That's an easy fix. Nightly Garbage Run for if for some reason early game you're not able to get this full setup and a Ghastly or a Haunter gets knocked out. Gust of Wind for if your opponent starts the game with a Grimer anywhere on their side of the field, you're going to be able to use your draw power, get at least one Gust of Wind into your hand, that way you can draw out that Grimer, knock it out before it can ever even evolve up into a Muck and ruin this deck, because really that's the only chance your opponent has. Rounding out the deck is going to be 6 Psychic Energy. The only other card I didn't really talk about was Sabrina's Gaze, which is after you've used a bunch of draw power and you still don't get what you want, Sabrina's Gaze is really just like a high power Professor Elm at that point. But you can see why this deck would be so feared because in playtesting, I honestly don't know how you could actually beat this deck. As to mention earlier, about the only thing your opponent can do to slow down the power of this Spookify deck is if they can somehow get a Muck into play. To do so, they would have to start the game with a Grimer and be able to evolve up into Muck before you can evolve into Dark Vileplume. Even then, Poltergeist is going to be able to deal a lot of damage to a Muck that you will be able to gust out, especially since you're going to be able to hit Muck for weakness 
as long as you haven't played that Mr. Mime on your bench. The only other potential early game threat that I can think of is Lass, and that's still pretty easy to recover from, given a decent top draw because this deck has so much draw power in it that you're kind of able to cascade one draw into more draws into more draws until you feel like stopping. Even if you encounter a jungle Mr. Mime, who is kind of the go-to card for breaking high damage decks, you can just attach another energy to Haunter, use bad dreams, and if you've got the Mr. Mime on your bench preventing any weaknesses or resistances, then bad dreams will deal 20 damage and get around Mr. Mime's barrier. After two of those, Mime is done before it could really knock out your own Haunter, even so, it's just as easy to get another one set up on the bench, plus you have Gust of Wind as backup to get around that Mr. Mime if there's another Pokemon in play. I'm telling you, this deck is insane. If you can possibly conceive of any other way to take it down, please let me know, because I've even tried building Haunter-specific knockout decks, and they still don't work. Let me know what other decks you want to see, what other types of videos you want to see, Thank you so much for everybody tuning in. Have a happy Halloween 2021. Good night and goodbye.